Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I am so excited about today's video. I am working in the studio today and I just got a huge shipment of art supplies in from Blick. So I thought that I would use this opportunity to show you some of my favorite art supplies and give you a few demos of some of the different things that I use. If you're interested in purchasing any of them, I'll put a link in the description with my Blick affiliate link so that you can shop them there. So once I get these boxes moved out of the way, I want to talk to you first about painting surfaces. I got these awesome 24 by 30 canvases. These are cotton duck canvases that are hand splined. If you look on the back of them, you can see that the canvas is tucked underneath the wood and there isn't any staples showing. This gives it a really professional and expensive look. It also has a one and a half inch edge, which is really nice, especially if you're not going to frame your canvas. This is a 36 by 36. Both of them are great statement pieces. So next up, let's talk about small surfaces. These are wood panels and cotton canvas. I love painting on both of them. They come in a variety of sizes. This is a six by six panel. I also got this in a cotton canvas. These are great sizes for putting on bookshelves or end tables. In addition to the 6x6, I ordered a 10x10 of the wood panel. It also has the one and a half inch edge. And I ordered the same sizes in the cotton canvas. 10x10 and 12x12 are great for painting sets of paintings. This is the gallery profile canvas. Gallery profile means it has the one and a half inch edge. It is back stapled along the back of it, which is fine with me for these smaller pieces. So the gallery profile is what I typically paint on, but I also ordered these museum profile canvases. You can see the difference in the depth of each of them. This is two and a half inches, and this one is one and a half inches. Here's my little studio assistant. Say hi, Romy. <laughs> okay, so next up we have palette paper. This is one of my favorite things to use while I'm painting. It's just so easy because it comes in a pad and you can just rip it off and toss it for easy cleanup after you're finished painting. So next up, we're gonna talk about brushes. There are so many different kinds of brushes. It can be really overwhelming when you're trying to decide what you want to use. There are hog hair bristles, squirrel hair bristles, all different kinds of natural fibers. I typically use synthetic bristles. I find that they have just as much bounce and don't lose the hairs as quickly as the natural brushes. I know that my paintbrushes are disgusting right now. I go through them pretty quickly because I paint so much. So be nice to me in the comments. I know I need to replace them. This is my absolute favorite brush. It's three quarters of an inch and it's an angle shader. If you look at the fibers on it, you can see that they're starting to get worn down. Brushes are not gonna last forever. I see them as a disposable tool. I try to take the best care of them as possible, but I know that they'll have to be replaced for the amount of painting that I'm doing. So if you've taken any of my virtual painting classes, you know that my absolute favorite brush is this round number eight. I use this so, so much. It is so versatile. You can get such great lines and also color block with it, which is really nice when you're painting florals. Another brush that I use a lot is a round number two. Um, this is really good for any detail work or signing your signature. 
This brush is a one and a half inch brush. I don't typically use this as much as the other three that I just showed you, but I do like to do background colors or any large spaces with this. Really, I just love that they're all long handle brushes. Okay, next I'm gonna talk about this little palette knife. This is great for scooping or scraping. It is one of my favorite tools. I love adding cool texture to painting. So I'll just go scrape, 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 and you'll get this cool little speckled effect. Okay, next up, we're gonna talk about paint. There are so many different brands of paint. My absolute favorite to work with is Golden. I feel like this is the holy grail of paint. The pigments are so, so beautiful and so good. Once you start mixing colors, you'll see the beautiful variety of colors within each of their shades. So these are some of my absolute favorite colors. We're gonna link them in the description in our affiliate link so that you can shop them. In addition to Golden, I also like to use Basics. This is a more affordable option. Paint can get really expensive. I feel like Basics is a great paint that is more affordable. So in addition to brands, another thing to think about is the different types of paint. So there's different fluidity within the same color. These are all different shades of blue, but I just want to go over some of the different paint types that you can shop. Okay, so first up is manganese blue. This is just a regular fluidity paint, so you can see how nice and smooth it is. Next up, we have a heavy body paint, so you can see when I squeeze this out how much thicker it is. So this paint is much more opaque and um, very different than the first kind. Okay, so next up I have a high flow cerulean blue. This one is almost liquid compared to the other two. So you can see when I squeeze this out just how much more fluid it is compared to the others. Okay, so next up I have this fluorescent blue that comes in a jar. It is also a regular body paint, the same as the first one, but it is a different opacity because of the light facetness because it's fluorescent. So I'm gonna quickly demo just how different each of these look. So I'm gonna start with our regular acrylic paint. So this, you can see, is just like a medium paint. It's not opaque, so you have to layer it quite a bit or mix in different colors to increase the opacity. So here's what it looks like on a birch panel. So you can see it's pretty fluid but you can see through it, so you have to really build with this kind of paint. Okay, so next up we have the heavy body paint. As I'm mixing with it, you can just see how much more thick it is. The consistency is much more opaque, so you need less of this paint to cover more of your canvas than the other. So now I'll show you on the wood panel what this one looks like. You can see how much more it covers than the first paint. The first one is much more transparent and the heavy body paint is just so much thicker. 
Okay, so next up we have this high fluid paint. This one is almost liquid. It's really good for doing line work in your paintings and adds just another quality of texture. You can see how loose it is. Okay, so the last one that I'm gonna talk about is this regular flow fluorescent blue paint. So this is the one that was in the jar. It is similar to the first paint and then it's kind of a medium thickness, but it, you really do need to layer it. So it reflects a lot of light and has just a really bright pigment. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about mediums. First up, I have this slow drying blending gel. This is by Liquitex. It's one of my favorite mediums to use. So now I'll demonstrate how this blending gel makes blending two colors so simple and it extends the drying time. So I use this in a one-to-one -one ratio. A lot of times I'll actually mix it into my white paint um, and then use the white paint to mix into the other colors. Right now, I'll start with the medium, add some yellow, add blue. So I'm gonna create just a simple gradient of this really kind of like a lime green color. So I'm mixing uh, blue and yellow to make this lime green and then I mixed the blending gel into it and then I'm going to add a little bit more yellow into this color so that I can create this gradient. So I'll show you on the white canvas I have this lime green color and then I actually think that I need to make that color a little bit darker so that you can really see it so I'm adding a little bit of the blue now I wanna blend these two together, and remember I mix the gel into the paints, so you can see how easily that creates this gradient and it just blends. That medium, while you could do this gradient without it, it just makes it so effortless and it also extends the drying time so you can bend the paint on your canvas longer, which is wonderful because acrylics dry so fast. Next up, I have this gloss glazing liquid. This is by Golden. It is my new favorite medium. I use it a lot, not during my painting process, but more towards the end. It increases the fluidity, but also adds this beautiful gloss sheen to your pigment. So it's really nice to add this at the end to add that shine and really bring out the brilliance of your colors. So now I'll show you what it looks like on top of the paint that I already put on this wood panel so you can see the difference. You see how shiny it is? It just really adds a nice finish to your paintings and I just, I love this medium. Okay, so next up I have a clear gesso. I don't use this often because when you buy pre-stretched canvases, these are already treated with gesso so you don't necessarily need to cover them. But if I'm stretching a canvas, then I need to use this clear gesso on it. Some people also like to cover their birch panels in clear gesso, but you don't necessarily have to, and my personal preference is to leave them untreated, so I don't normally use this, but you could. Okay, so next up I have varnish. I like to use this gloss medium and varnish by Liquitex. I bought it in this huge gallon, but you can also get it in smaller bottles if you don't need this much. So I like to use this varnish to coat on top of my paintings, but you could use it as your painting to mix in with your paints. We varnish a lot of painting, so I need a lot of this. You can see it's kind of just a clear gloss texture, it almost looks like glue when it dries. But I just like to take a clean paintbrush and then come in, I'm a, I'll demo on the bottom corner of this so you can see the difference. But I come in and I follow the same brush strokes and just 
coat on top of this and it gives it this beautiful sheen. It makes the acrylic paints almost look like oil paints. If you mixed it into your paint as you went, that would also help with the shininess, but you can also do it at the end. So this will increase the brilliance of the colors and even after it dries, it will maintain the same shininess. Next up, we have embellishments. So on some of my paintings, I like to go in and just add a little bit of gold to really bring the emphasis and just for a fun pop. So this is gold foil. There are many different brands of it. This one is Creative Concepts. But the main thing I like to look for when I'm buying gold foil is that it is in sheets like this. There are some that it's like broken up into little flakes. I find that really difficult to work with, but when it's in a big sheet, um, it's easier to pick up and then you can put it down with an adhesive and this is a sealer that can go on top of it to make sure that it doesn't flake up from your painting. So now I'm gonna do a quick demo for you on this painting that I have that is a work in progress right now. So I'm gonna use the sealer. I really would prefer to use the adhesive for this part of it, but this will work for the sake of demonstration. So if this was the adhesive, you'd put it down onto your canvas. You can also use wet paint at this part or Elmer's glue. And then you tear off a piece of your gold foil, put it on top of it very gently, and then come in with a dry brush and brush away the excess. After this sets, then you would go in with the sealer and put the sealer on top of it to make sure that it does not flake away from your canvas. So you can see this little embellishment just adds so much shine to this painting. I'll go in with white and add petals on top of this and this will be a really pretty painting of white roses once it's finished. I love these little gold details, they add so much. This Liquitex ink is also another thing that I like to use to embellish my paintings. It comes with this little eyedropper tool, so you can use this for really fine detail work. I like to just squeeze a little bit out onto my palette and then use one of my fine paint brushes. So this is the number two round brush I showed you earlier. And then you can go in and just add a little accents to your paintings. So you can see how this just adds so much shine and texture to the painting. See how it glistens, so beautiful. Okay, so this concludes my video of my favorite art supplies. I need to get back to work, so I hope that y'all enjoyed and that you learned something new. If you are interested in purchasing any of these, be sure to check out the link in the description and be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Bye y'all.